One is out and away we go with the Angels and the Rangers with midweek baseball on FS1. Glad to have you aboard here. Mark Gubazet, I'm Kevin Burkhart. And so for these Angels after dropping the first two to the Orioles, they come back and get a win yesterday. And what a shocker, Mark, the offense being spurred by Mike Trout, who got off to a rough start and everybody panicked. But you know what? He's just fine. Yeah, Kevin, the former MVP is starting to swing the bat except well, even in the month of May, where he is crushing the baseball. His last 19 games batting average at 365 with 16 RBI and yes five home runs he got 16 in his career against Ranger pitching he's going to need to be able to swing the bat a little bit because Adrian Beltre going for Texas he's a guy that's had a lot of success throughout his career against the Angels 36 career home runs what he has done with runners in scoring position which is fourth best in the American League 391 he hits the ball to all fields. And he has a lot of mistake pitches a long, long way. These two teams know each other well. They've played already seven times this year. This will be the eighth meeting, and it should be fun like it always is. Mike Trout even has some time for autographs here at Globe Life Park. They like him right now. They won't in a few minutes, I can promise you. Starting lineups, first pitch, Rangers and the Angels coming your way from Arlington in a moment. And can't get a better night for baseball. Sure, it's a little humid, but this is pretty good as the Angels and the Rangers will kick off an early week series here. And these teams certainly familiar with each other. They've been neck and neck in this NL West the last couple of years. Mike Sosha and Jeff Bannister, your managers, exchanging the lineup cards at home plate as the Rangers about to take the field. Derek Collin will be the man getting the ball for Texas tonight, making his ninth start of the year and Gooby will always watch the pitchers but looking forward to hearing your keys for tonight. What do yeah you think? I mean when you think about it in this ballpark Kevin, there's always going to be a lot of runs scored especially if you make some mistakes the baseball flies and carries very well quick mm -hmm. through the infield but my keys for this game especially for the angel on the angel side you got to think of the big three together Trout Pujols and CJ Crone they've combined for 37 home runs in their career versus Ranger pitching batting average over 300 on the Ranger side though the keystone combination of Andrews and Odor both have th swung the bat very well. Andrews, great numbers, could steal a bunch of bases. And also, when you think about Odor this season, hitting well over 300, 346 with a home run. 
against Angel pitching. Those two guys have created a lot of havoc for Angel pitching throughout their careers. Uh, Mark's keys of the game brought to you by Ford as we swing around the Rangers infield tonight. And we take a look at the Angels lineup that Mike Sosha put together today. And there is one glaring omission with Yanel Escobar at the top. He has had a fine year. But you see in that number two hole, Mike Trout moves up because Cole Calhoun not playing tonight. Yeah, getting this the day off, this refresher, as Mike Sosha loves to say, that it moves Mike Trout back up to a position. He's hit a number of times throughout his career, the number two spot in the lineup. And Pujols playing first base in the field tonight with Crone DHing. And they will get a look at Derek Holland, who's already pitched against him twice so far this year. His last time out uh, was a gem, six shutout innings. And Holland is, is a little different guy than, than we remember. Velocity down a little bit from where he has been in his career. Yeah, he used to be a mid-90s guy, Kevin. Now he's around 90-94, occasionally with a four-seam fastball, throw a slider, curveball, and a changeup. A good changeup that he's thrown a little bit more so this season. A slider, he's thrown less because he has a less feel for that pitch. And so 29 year old Derek Collins set to get us underway and underway we are in Arlington with a fastball high and upstairs to Yunel Escobar the third baseman who comes to Anaheim and is really hitting in his first season here 306 average. There's a strike Holland he really needs to work that inside portion of the play when he's on that's what's key for him. Yeah he tries to keep the hitters from getting those arms extended when he's inside whether it's a slider or fastball he's very effective out over the plate not as much. Escobar wraps one and gets by the backhand of Elvis Andrews so a leadoff base hit for Yanel Escobar to get the Angels going. Look at his defense for the Texas Rangers. And you've got the guy at third base who is going to be a Hall of Famer. And you know what? Even at his age, he could still pick it just like he used to. Adrian Beltre. I mean, I, I grew up watching Mike Schmidt coming in on the baseball. I've never seen anybody as good as Schmidt. -y. Well, Adrian Beltre is one of the best I've ever seen coming in on a baseball. Still great range and a very accurate throwing arm. You saw in there is, is there is Beltre. We take a look at Trout. There is a rookie just called up Jared Hoying in left field. He was called up. The Rangers made a slew of moves, which we'll get you in a moment. Hoying had a five RBI night in AAA last night. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. Out there starting. So you got to remember that in the minor leagues, you get five RBIs, you get a chance to come up to the show. That's pretty good as Trout takes a strike. One and one to Mike Trout, who, well, we said, got off to that slow start. Uh, and everyone's wondering, boy, is he still one of the greatest players in the game? Answer, yes. He's dominating as usual 10th in the American League in batting average. Holland will take a look over at Escobar who is not really a base stealing threat and Holland doesn't give up a whole lot of stolen bases one in two attempts this year he's got 24 career pickoffs so he's got a very good move something that the Angels have known for a long time as far as not being able to try to steal and or go hitting run with him on the mound. Not they'll take a look at Escobar he does not have a stolen base this year. Certainly a lot of room on the right side of the infield for Trout at the plate. Modified shift on. Slices one into the stands. Well, tough to double up Trout. He's so fast, but the Rangers turn the most double plays in the league. We'll keep an eye on that. So here is Mike Trout in his career against Texas. Scooby, I'd say that's pretty productive. Yeah, I mean, when you think about the home runs he's hit throughout his career a lot, nine of them here at this ballpark. So he drives the ball very well to right center field. Great carry in this ballpark to that part. One, two, and just misses inside. Crowd wanted a strike three call there. Just watching the last series for the Angels against Baltimore, they pitched him inside a lot. And you were seeing that right away from Derek Holland. Staying inside on Trout. Last five games, 421 batting average. Wow. Small lead for Escobar. 1 2, and Trout fouls it off. So, where do you pitch Trout? You, you, you know, where, where exactly do you throw in the baseball? You can't pitch him in, you can't pitch him low. Where do you throw him? Well, the big thing is, remember a couple years ago, every pitcher was going upstairs. Well, now all of a sudden, his batting average on high pitches has increased tremendously. So, I think the big thing is you have to, with Trout, is you have to establish a fastball off the plate and then something soft down and away. 
2 2 on the way. And Trout has worked this count full. So trying to go in, 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 but Trout has fouled a couple off. And now all of a sudden we have a full count. Yeah, a lot of times on a full count, you'll see the Angels running less than two outs with, under Mike Sosha's club. But here again, because of his move, very difficult to do so. And again, he stays alive. You know, it's interesting. Trout, you think about this too, uh, all of his strengths. And, and then you add this in there. He's got 53 hits on the year. 28 of them have come with two strikes. It's amazing what he's able to do, putting that ball in play with that number behind the count with two strikes on him. He sees a lot of pitches, about 4.47 pitches per plate appearance for Trout. So he's not, he's not uncomfortable when he gets two strikes on him. He'll be able to take that first pitch and still make a good pass behind in the count. I mean, that graphic was unreal. I mean, he, he his average with two strikes is over 100 points better than the mean in the majors. Again, it'll be a 3-2. This one tacked back the mound. Andrew steps on second. On the first, it's a double play. So the Rangers have turned the most in the league. Get a key one there, and Holland wins the battle against Trout. Yeah, you mentioned that. The fact is the Rangers turned so many double plays, and the Angels hit in to the most double plays. Now they're 48th. He ran that fastball inside again. Trout tried to get the barrel, bring his hands in, unable to do so. And Andrew's so good as far as fielding his position. Steps on the bag quickly, avoids the flip over to our door because you don't have much time, especially with Trout running down the line to complete a 6-3 double play. And so two outs now for Holland, and here's Albert Pujols playing first base, batting third tonight. And he takes a fastball for a strike. Well, yeah, we told you, they, they turn a lot of them, and the Rangers hit into a lot of them. That's a pretty good formula, I guess, for the Rangers. Andrew Sodor, nice combination. Pools pops it up should be easy Mazzara in right and Holland had a battle with Trout but other than that a good first inning after giving up the leadoff single Rangers to bat. Bottom of the first Rangers coming about against the Angels here in Arlington and the Rangers lineup is put together by Jeff Bannister Odor at the topic of the day off yesterday against the left hander and Keiko Desmond has been on fire in that number two hole. And Nick Tropiano's first pitch is hit right up the middle and placed perfectly. Gloria Petit. That was pretty close. That was play. close. Odor gets down the line very quickly and the one thing about Odor he's a guy that's going to be hacking at the first pitch often. 
Steve Bouchelle checking in to make sure that Odor was actually safe on that one, he think, he's thinking. Well, it's a tough call right here. Is the baseball in the glove? Is the foot on the base? How quickly he got down the line. That is extremely close. It's going to be tough to over, overturn that one, though. Yeah, especially with the call on the field out. That's been the trend. You know, stay with the call on the field unless it's conclusive, and it's very, very close. Surprising he's going to challenge that, though. They will challenge. So Jeff Banner says, wait a second. If I get my leadoff guy on, get something going early, might as well. Medals will go for that, so Odor has not come off the bag. And we will see what New York says as Texas will challenge this play. One more look. And is the baseball secure in the glove as the foot is going down on the base? Is the heel on the base before the foot goes down on the base? That's the question. And again, if Rangers don't win this challenge, they're out of challenges then from this point forward. Pretty gutsy call by Jeff Banner. So I've seen him do that a number of times, and he's been right. So this is a tough one early on for the Rangers. Good Not having that anymore the rest of the game, yeah. essentially. Good time to show you our umpiring crew for tonight. Will Little has the play. Ted Barrett is a crew chief at first. He's the one that made that call. Hey, you know what? If it's a, it could be a game-changing play in the first inning. You get a guy on, all of a sudden could have a big inning. Looking at it, my gut is that he got there a hair after the ball got yeah there. I mean it and he's out and they're out of challenges now that's a tough one to lose a challenge on the first batter I get it because certainly with Odor he creates havoc but Banner still doesn't like it and a close play as a shortstop Petit throws out Odor so after all that it's just a six to three in your scorecard as an infielder now you're going to know for the Angels when you see Odor hit a ball on the ground you better get rid of it quickly Ian Desmond, the hitter against Nick Tropiano. And he takes a strike. Desmond has really found a home here. He's found some comfort after a very slow start. Since April 21st, when he was hitting 132, he's hitting 336. And he has really been hot hitting with power and playing center field. And you know what, Gooby? Playing it pretty well for a position yeah. that he never played before. He's, he's athletic. He can cover some ground. When you move from left to center like he has, Without missing a beat at this point, he does have a strong throwing arm, so you're not able to take that extra base against him in the outfield as a runner. 1 1. And Desmond drills this one, and that one is going to go all the way to the wall. Ian Desmond on the second. He'll stand up there with a one out double, his 11th of the year. And the one thing with Desmond, what you've seen from the difference now with the Rangers is compared at times with the Nationals. He has that open stance, closes it, but then opens it back up to be able to have coverage middle to middle in. And he gets the barrel of bat on that extremely well. When you think about his numbers on middle, middle pitches so far this year, 486. He's not missed anything on that inner part of the plate, middle to middle in. So Desmond on second, and here's Prince Fielder against Nick Tropiano. And there is a ball. You know, Prince on the year hitting just 200, and it may not sound like much, but he is hitting a little bit lately. Hits in five straight games, six of his last 19, and when you're hitting 184, 200 sounds like a dream. An interesting matchup right here when you think about it. Nick Tropiano, who has been very good, especially his last time out, went seven innings, two and two with an ERA 3.30. A very good assortment of off speed pitch. Fastballs around 89 93, but a good curveball and a very good changeup and a split finger fastball. 1 0, and Fielder on the off speed goes fishing one and one and exactly why it's a good combination you got Prince Fielder who is struggling on all speed pitch batting average at 136 versus a guy that throws a lot of all speed pitches and he's got a great whiff percentage on all speed at 43.2 percent. Big cuts and there you go again why not go back to it. 
Well here we go with the Rangers who lead the league hitting with runners in scoring position and then you're facing a guy with Tropiano who when guys are in scoring position doesn't allow hits. So I, something's got to get. I think the big thing Ken, when you look at him and watch him pitch Tropiano does a great job of exploiting the fact as a hitter you're looking fastball there's a lot of all speed pitches one two and he does so again but fielder just got a piece. And so we'll stay alive. Both these teams have actually hit well with runners in scoring position this year. They've been opportunistic. And that's usually the time when the pitcher bears down the most is with runners in scoring position because you don't want to give up an earned run. That looks bad on your bubblegum card at the end of the year. One two coming. And he got him. So Fielder goes down on strikes. Steady diet as you predicted of off speed in the first strikeout for Tropiano. And I always remember Prince Fielder when he is on his game. He's very good on anything low in the strike zone. He can hit the ball extremely far to left center field. But he hasn't been able to stay back. See how his hip is opening up. Front shoulders pulling off the baseball. Can't keep the hands back through the zone at that point. Unable to make contact on off speed pitches. So Fielder retired for the second out. Desmond remains at second after the double and with two down here is Adrian Beltre knows a thing or two about facing the Angels in his career as he pointed out the onset of the game 36 career home runs against L.A. And takes a breaking ball a little low for a ball. See those numbers with runners in scoring position this season 391 and with two out and runners in scoring position 400. So you're thinking if you're Tropiano I, I, I'm making him swing at one of my pitches out of the strike zone even though in this ballpark you don't like to gift runners but when you have a guy that productive it's difficult not to pitch around him. Inside for two and zero. Oh. Let me ask you why even bother pitching around him rather than you have first base open at this point and, yeah. and a batter who's cold and Moreland on deck. I know a lot of times you'll think well it's early in the game but one swing from Adrian Beltrade all of a sudden the starting pitcher on the other side is comfortable because he's got a two nothing lead. Right. Yeah I would not I would not give in. Beltrade is, is not a guy that's going to chase out of the strike zone either he'll take the walk. Bends around the outside corner so it's two and one to Beltrade. Two one three and one with a fastball so Joe Biano certainly doesn't look like he wants anything to do with Adrian Beltre with Mitch Moreland waiting on deck a left hander Beltre has got to be thinking I'm going to get a breaking ball right here but Beltre is very good as far as leaving his hands back in the hitting zone and shooting a breaking ball to right center field inside just missed Beltre draws a walk and it's first and second with two down. And that'll bring up Mitch Moreland. 237 on the year is Moreland. Eight doubles, four home runs. But Moreland's last 10 games is only five of his last 31. So this this is the batter you want to challenge here, not Beltre, and we'll see how Tropiano does. And the one thing though, when you look at Mitch Moreland, he hits all speed pitches pretty well down in the strike zone. So this is a pretty tough matchup for Tropiano also. Inside and low ball one and now a little meeting as Carlos Perez will go out and chat the way he received that baseball that fastball it almost looked like it was a potential cross up and as a catcher that's the one you don't want to have you don't want to be looking break a ball get a fastball now if you're looking you think it's a fastball down a break a ball you can adjust it's more difficult as you can see him trying to catch that fastball at 91. But the signs are different with a man at second you're going to go through a series of signs this that, that way the guy at second the runner can't relay that into the hitter. So you go through a, a bunch of signs before you settle in and what pitch you're going to throw. 
That's why Batik comes in to check real quick with Tropiano. So it's 1 0 to Moreland. We're in the first. Off speed strike. And you can see a steady diet of change ups and sliders from Tropiano. But with that, he gets a lot of strikeouts and he gets a lot of fly balls, which maybe in this park is not the greatest thing no, in the world. No, it's not a good combination in this yard. Baseball carries so well, especially to right center field. Fastball misses. Two and one to the Rangers' first baseman. And the one thing to always keep an eye on with Tropiano, when you see him falling off towards the first base side of the, of the pitching mound, that means his arm's dragging through and the, and the baseball's hanging out there a lot longer for the hitter to be able to read the pitch, whether it's going to be a breaking ball or fastball. He tries to keep that front shoulder in longer. Two and two. And right here for Tropiano, keeping that front shoulder in, when he flies that open so quickly, you can see as a hitter, you can see the baseball just a little bit longer. Not that you have a lot of time to react on a pitch, but when you see the baseball a little bit longer out of the pitcher's hand, chances are better you can read exactly where the pitch is coming, whether it's off speed or fastball. 2-2 two -two coming. He'll check, and he went around strike three. Angel Hernandez says, yep, Moreland went around. And the Rangers two on. They failed to score. Getting that. It's yeah, great. that's perfect. C.J. Crone leads it off for the Angels and takes a breaking ball for a strike from Derek Holland to start off the second. We are scoreless. Each team had at least one runner on in that first inning. Rangers left two on for Tropiano. Got a strike out of Moreland in the threat. And it's outside to C.J. Crone playing D.H. tonight. Also plays first base. He and Pools switch a little bit. And Crone has shown some life the last 28 games. Mazzara effortlessly over one down. Moments ago, we caught up with Angels manager Mike Sosha from the dugout. Well, Mike got a like Tropiano there coming off maybe his best performance last time out and then getting out of trouble in the first. Yeah, Nick's really been throwing the ball well for us. He was really pitch efficient last outing, and uh, I think that's the next step in his development to get into that sixth, seventh, fifth inning on a consistent basis. And um, he got out of some trouble here in the first, and hopefully he'll be around to play because his stuff is really good. Mm. So, Mike Holland, it seems to be throwing a lot of pitches on the inner half of the plate. What adjustments could you make as a hitter against him tonight? 
Well, he, uh, you know, uh, Holland will work on both sides, but he likes to get that, that fastball glove side into righties. Uh, he's also got a good change up, and he'll uh, back up with some breaking balls. But, um, you know, he comes right after you. Um, uh, you know, he'll, he'll, he's not afraid to challenge guys inside. We know that. Mike, your offense has been better in May, no doubt about it. What have you liked the most about it? Well, I think we're getting on base. That starts everything. Even though we're not driving the ball, I think the way we will as the summer goes on, uh, right now we're getting on base, which is better than we were at the start of the season. We're getting a little bit of action. We're hitting better with guys in scoring position and, uh, you know, consequently score more runs. All right, Mike, thanks very much. All right, guys. Turns out Mike Sosa was right because Johnny Giovatella is on base. Carlos Perez swinging at the first pitch, fading Mazzari and can't get it. Now he's going to fire to second, and Giovatella is out. What an arm from Nomar Mazzaro. Yeah, the, the thing that's so special about Mazzaro, he just turned 21 recently, always under control. A lot of times, especially as a young outfielder, you're going to panic there. You're going to try to go in on that baseball and quickly try to throw it in. And he gathered himself up in a perfect throw into Elvis Andrews to get the out at second base. Now, Giovatella is going back on the baseball. A lot of times as, as a base runner, you want to drift a little bit further out, although it's a difficult read. You can see that ball off the bat that has a potential of falling into that outfield. That'll bring up Gregorio Petit. See, Johnny G. Vitello was going back initially after that ball was hit. And again, you don't have to apply the tag right there for Andrews. It's a force out play, but a good throw, though, by Mazzara. See the shot of Andrews kind of busting Mazzara because he was throwing him a, a little bit of a cutter there. <laughs> Four seamer next time, man. By the way, how rough is it for Carlos Perez, who's on first base, and instead of a single, it's got a fielder's choice? That's a rough one. Again, because when, when the, the way Mazzara is, is completely under control. And then if you're Carlos, you've been hit the ball well. You've had an RBI in four straight games, thinking you're going to continue getting that batting average well over 200. Then you get a force out like that at second. That's already the third assist of the year from Mazzara. Remember, it didn't start the year with the big club, but he is he's developing into a star. Now, there is no question about it. Came up at age 20. He just turned 21. And, you know, you hear the term five tool player bandied about a lot, but he's got all of it. And like I said, under control, the poise is another tool that he has. Two and one, the count to Petit. And Holland sees this one go the other way. Perez will stop at second. So you want to see Mazzara's defense so far in the month he's been in the big leagues? Well, here's a little taste. Todd Frazier, April 23rd. I think that one was to tie the game, actually. And he Rob that homer then to Lewitsky in Toronto. Watch this arm. Michael Saunders going to try and score on the fly. Nope. It's, it's really tough to teach that technique. He got behind the baseball so well and then the perfect accurate throw to the plate. He does everything extremely well. So now Holland in some trouble because technically should be three consecutive singles if not for Mazzara's D. And the Angels have runners on first and second for the eighth hitter. Rafael Ortega. There's a strike. Ortega, 271 on the year. Brings an element of speed, good defense to this team. You know, the, the Angels have had so many players that are hurt. 10 on the DL, so because a couple of left fielders are on that DL, here comes Ortega. Yeah, he's got four outfield assists himself. He's a center fielder by trade. He's played left field. He's played a little center, but now playing right field because he has that right field arm strength to be able to throw out runners trying to take that extra base. A longer throw from right field than it would be from left field. Hollins 0 2. Blown away. You see that batting average against Derek Holland at 395 with runners in scoring position. The reason why, in my opinion, is because his lack of feel for his slider. That would have been a perfect time for him to throw a slider there to Ortega. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Said he went fastball and missed. You know, talking to people around the Rangers, too, Holland is. He's got a lot with this knuckle curve that he's that he's like this year, but you know, slider was a huge pitch for him earlier in his career. Doug Brocale, the pitching coach on the left of your screen. 
Still got that big old goatee. He's had that thing for a while. Yep. And when you look at the batting average for left-handed batters against Holland, 259 this year. That's something you wouldn't normally see when he has a feel for his breaking ball, especially the slider. 2-2. Two two. Little tapper. This could be tough. Andrews, though, played it beautifully. The throw just in time. And Ortega, who can run, is punched out. So Holland gets out of trouble again. Angels fail to score. We're scoreless, heading to the bottom of the second. That little tyke is enjoying it so far. Baseball Night in America returns on Saturday. Some of the best players and teams in baseball will be in action. Dodgers take on the Mets. Cardinals battle the Nationals. Or the Pirates and the Rangers. It's all Saturday at 7 Eastern. Only on Fox or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Elvis Andrews will lead things off for the Rangers against Nick Tropiano in the second. And he takes outside for strike one with a fastball. Tropiano gets it to about 92. He's not an extremely hard thrower. Andrews had a nice offensive season so far. By the way, the Dodgers and the Mets are still pretty good friends, aren't they? After that playoff series last year? I don't I don't really think so. No. Matter no. of fact. This jacket. This jacket. I mean, you could you could take that uh, back a long way. You could take it back Mike Sosha's home run in 88. That rivalry goes a while back. I think it's Doc Good, wasn't it? It was. Changed that playoff yes. series. One two and sliders away. Sosha this is his 17th year managing the Angels World Series champs in 02. That is one heck of a run managing one baseball team especially in today's times. Exactly. That's a, that's a long time successful time for Mike Sosha too. Two two to Andrews high in the air to left Shane Robinson makes the play for the first out and now we'll get a first look tonight at no more Mazzara the 21 year old came up April 10th his debut actually against the Angels and it was a Ranger loss but all he did was go three for yeah, four with a home run I remember that one well I mean the way he stayed back with the baseball so well. You know, again, open stance he has, but still his hands are so quiet through the hitting zone. 304 on the year, hit a home run 
yesterday against the Astros in the Rangers sweep. He's really done it all and, and again just turned 21 at the end of April you, you think about his maturity I, I, he was one of the best prospects in baseball so that's not a surprise but the amount of success this early and how he's handled it it's got to be at least a little surprising he's handled everything beautifully I mean just turning 21 he is second among American League rookies the team's minor league player of the year last year and the youngest player in the major leagues. I think part of it goes back to Adrian Beltre, how well he kind of keeps his clubhouse for the Rangers in order. If you're a young player, you have a guy like Adrian Beltre who's on his way to the Hall of Fame, brings you aboard and has a good conversation with allows you to just fit right in with the team right away. Called strike as Mazzara watched it all along. Well, I keep going like this, you're going to be mentioned nationally among the young great stars in this game. Two two got a piece I think the other thing that strikes you when you look at his game if you look at his hit chart it is almost even going the other way going up the middle and pulling the ball and when you look at his stance so wide open you would think that outer part of the plate has to be wide open for you that pitch before the foul ball fastball on the outside corner he took it but he's thinking in terms Harold Baines was like that behind in the count he can shoot that ball to left field very well and that's what he's able to do he looks inside early to turn on it. But away late allows him to keep his hands back through the hitting zone to hit that ball to left center field. Even with that hit chart in the infield, the Angels play that big shift. So only one infielder on the left side. But Mazzara has worked the count to three and two. Got him. Off speed from Tropiano. And already Nick Tropiano has three strikeouts. And again, we talked about that highest whiff percentage on off speed for Tropiano. 43.2% with seventh best in the major leagues. You can see why. You're thinking fastball. The pitch before, fastball. Then you come back with an off speed changeup. Now he'll throw a split finger fastball and a changeup. Doesn't happen too often when you see pitchers throw both. Usually they'll throw the split finger as your changeup. He has both of them. Here is Jared Hoying now making his debut and a big swing and a miss. Rangers had a bunch of moves today. And they put Shin Su Chu on the DL with a hamstring. They put Drew Stubbs on the DL with a toe injury. Joey Gallo was called up. Not sure if he's here yet. That was a late call. But then Jared Hoying, 27 years old. And when you're a youngster getting a chance up here at the big league level, the first game here, just getting here, you're looking fastball. So it's wise decisions so far, a lot of off speed, because you're geared up. You're, you're, you want to get that knock coming up right away. Hands are coming through the baseball. And that's what happens to you when you try to make contact with off speed. That was Gallo, by the way, so he did get here in time for the game. So, yeah, so all, all those moves for the Rangers. But... <laughs> Gallo's been working at first base. Let's and he's got a wake up call from Elvis Andrews. Yes. Hey, hey, you're on TV. Smile. I'll tell you what, he has unbelievable power. When he makes contact with the baseball, it is screaming off the bat. Back up the middle, but Tropiano with the behind his leg save, but then the throw and the catch can't be completed. It was a little away from Pujols who couldn't haul it in. And assuming that's an error, although Boying would love to have his first base hit. In his first major league at bat. Almost looked like Albert got his, you know, the footing wrong going to the base. Knocks it down with the foot, the kick save and a beauty. But then the, the throw and Albert didn't quite get to the base when Tropiano threw him the ball. Because he had some time. But a lot of times in the play like that as a pitcher, you, you panic a little bit thinking you got to get rid of the baseball quicker. This knocks it down right away, tracks the baseball. And stands up and then makes the throw. And Albert didn't quite get to the base step at that point and then had his footing off. So which it is, is unusual. An, sorry, Mark. It is an error on Tropiano. And that allows Hoying to reach base for the first time after his first major league at bat. And here comes Bobby Wilson.
You see as Albert's trying to find the base and then find the baseball, almost like what you see when a pitcher covers the base. That's exactly what Albert was doing, tracking the baseball, then trying to find the base with his foot. Outside to Wilson, yeah, and as a righty, you just can't get the glove across your body that much. So here is Wilson. This has been a wild year for him. I mean, consider this. The Rangers traded him to Detroit for Brian Holiday at the end of March. Holiday's on this roster as a catcher. Well, then the Rangers uh, went out and got Bobby Wilson back from Detroit. That's a foul ball. Uh, that happened May 3rd. And then a few days later, the Rangers played Detroit, and Bobby Wilson hit a grand slam against Detroit. I mean, that is a wild five weeks. Yeah, and he has two grand slams now. Two in one week, which is, is amazing. Because he came up as an angel, the guy that was very good behind the play, calling the game good hands. But to have two grand slams in a seven-day span against the Tigers and then against Toronto, unbelievable for Bobby Wilson. Who says you can't go home again? Yeah. I mean, yeah. perfect example, right? All this happened, by the way, because Robinson Chirinos has been out on the DL. They're starting catcher, so that he's a very good catcher, good defensive catcher, occasional power for the Rangers. And when you put it in perspective, the Rangers didn't have a grand slam last season. Bobby Wilson, two in a week. <laughs> That's not bad. Chirinos fractured his forearm after the first few games of the year, so. That's why they went out and got Wilson. Broke his wrist in the game against the Angels, as a matter of fact, and finished off as at bat. Hit a ball pretty good to right field before leaving the game. We are told, by the way, and both of us have not seen it, we are told that Hoying can fly. He was 13 of 16 on stolen bases in AAA Round Rock this year. And Mike Sosha was telling us before the game how they get a scouting report on, on him. Even though he hasn't played in the big leagues, they want to know everything about him. And they, clearly they know he's got good speed. But Tropiano with two pickoffs this year, including back-to-back -back games with a pickoff. He almost got hoing there. He was leaning. Hoying goes to that back part of the base. That's a longer tag for a first baseman, especially a right-handed throwing first baseman with the tag back. You go to that back part of the base and just barely looks like he gets his hand in. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he got his hand in there. Pitch out. So they were very aware of Hoying running. The other thing for the Angels in this run defense is that man right there. Carlos Perez is very good at throwing runners out. His two years, last two years here in Anaheim, 39% throwing runners out, which is second best in the American League. Yeah, quick release, great transfer from the glove to the throwing arm for Carlos Perez. Calls a very good game, but also his release extremely quick. Another look this time, they got him! What a job by Tropiano. He worked and worked and he got his man. Yeah, and if that's his third pickoff for a right-handed pitcher, that's a lot of pickoffs, this, especially this early in the season. Welcome to the big leagues. Jared Hoying, Tropiano does the job.
Shane Robinson leads off the top of the third for the Angels scoreless game there's been a bunch of traffic on the bases so far. But that last inning ended with a beautiful pickoff move from Nick Tropiano to get Jared Hoying playing in his first big league game and here it is and Albert quick on the tag doesn't even allow Hoying to even get back to the base tries to get that hand in there this time it's on Albert's foot and he applies the tag Again, three pickoffs this year for Nick Tropiano good move for a right hander as Robinson takes inside two and one to the former Cardinal picked up by these Angels just looking for bodies with ten players on the disabled list Nava and Gentry those left fielders out two and two yeah both these clubs have dealt with some serious injuries a couple years ago even in the last year the Rangers a lot of change especially in their rotation and some key guys going down the Angels right now with ten players on the disabled list fouled back and you think about it, Mike Sosha's had a deal with three pitchers three guys that were supposed to be in the rotation on the 60 day DL right now Garrett Richards Tyler Skaggs and you got CJ Wilson and actually Andrew Heaney also that's really rough considering that could be four fifths of your rotation. Th this is the list. I mean, your closer, your starting shortstop, your platoon left field, which you had to start the season, is gone. Skaggs, who many predict could be a second or third starter in this league. Uh, your catcher, Giovanni Soto. Anything else? I mean, that's that's a lot. Well, Houston Street could be back pretty soon. He's going to throw an assignment coming up on Friday to a simulated game today. So he could be back potentially by the weekend. And then you got C.J. Wilson who's going to Inland Empire pitching in a game five innings or so on Wednesday. So he's not too far away himself from being back in there. But Giovanni Soto has really done a great job. Former Ranger himself hitting the ball and catching the ball for the Angels this year. It's been a nice surprise. So players use somehow the other teams have more the Braves and the Twins who are both not very good this year so and Cincinnati's in transition themselves so those three of those four teams that really weren't supposed to be in the conversation <laughs> for potential playoff spots Shane Robinson went the other way he was going to first he should have headed back to the dugout nine pitch strikeout for Holland that's his first tonight and we talked about it his ability to throw the fastball inside and it's a real good job by Bobby Wilson that's a catcher getting a strike call you see him bring that back in the inside corner give the illusion to the home plate umpire that is indeed a strike not to Shane Robinson was it a strike though oh, no. but to Bobby Wilson the way he brought that back in or a very good pitch framer back to the top of the order with Escobar third baseman swings at the first pitch and Odor puts him away so two down for Derek Holland. Scott's MLB pitch hit and run is the official U skills competition of Major League Baseball. It's free for boys and girls ages 7 through 14. Play your way to the national finals. Have the chance to compete during All Star Week in San Diego. Find a local competition in your area at pitchhitrun.com. And she might be ready to do it right yes, now. Indeed. Love it. It's a great ballpark. Yeah, it really is. Mike Trout takes a breaking ball for a strike from Holland. It is a great ballpark. That's why it is with some surprise that you find out last week that the Rangers are getting a new yeah. one. Well, because it's a little bit toasty here for about five of the six months of the year and a little bit of precipitation on occasion. Can be warm here. It's gorgeous tonight. I'm going to get a retractable roof stadium in this same area in Arlington, right by Cowboys Stadium, too. Breaking ball and Trout smashes it down the left field line. Makes the turn at first, and he's got a two out double. Ninth of the year from Mike Trout. And looked comfortable running the bases. Had to leave the game yesterday, rolled his foot over on the third base bag. Get up his ninth double this season. Break a ball, I brought his hands in, and he was able to get the barrel of the bat. You talk about exit speed off the bat. How great he gets that leverage down, that foot down, and then the barrel of the bat on the baseball and hooks it down the line. Here's Beltre. 
He was <laughs> he was high fiving Mike Trout on that swing. I think. He was doing. <laughs> he, he, he's he's something else. He seems to enjoy the game, don't you think? I would say yes. <laughs> I would say yes. So now Albert Pools, who popped out to right his last at bat, fastball outside, one and zero. Pools 349 his last 11 games. Time is called. You know, Pujols' numbers may all be down. His batting average on the year only 228, but I'd still take him with runner in scoring yeah. position. That's for sure. And he has a game plan every time. He knows exactly what the pitcher's going to try to do against him, and he always seems to be able to get the barrel of the bat on the baseball, no matter where located. That one located beautifully on the inside corner. It's one and one. But here's the stunning thing from Pujols this year. You look at anything you want. The batting average. 14% line drive percentage, his fourth lowest in the game. I and mean, that that is stunning because yeah. all he ever hit, especially in his Cardinals days, were line drives. And that one is hit hard enough, that's for sure. That is not a line drive. That is a bomb. Two run shot for Albert Pulse. I think he got mad at you for moving that up there. He's angry. <laughs> That baseball went a long, long way. You're talking right at that 390 sign in left center field. This is the big part of the ballpark, left center. And Albert, talk about some distance. These two so important as far as scoring runs for the Angels. Trout a double, then Albert Pools a two-run home run. Even, even Mike Sosha gave Albert Pools a wow. See a fastball in. And Albert's been a much better hitter on pitches that are a bit at least thigh high or belt high. Low strikes, tough time. That was thigh high, and he hit it out a long way. Who needs line drives when you get hit balls into orbit like that, Gooby? That's the lesson learned here. That's almost like a Brad Lidge type home run we saw in that playoff series against the Astros a few years ago when he was with the Cardinals. Yes, indeed, for Pools. Career home run number 569, which ties Rafael Palmero for 12th. All time. Amazing just the number of extra base hits throughout his career for Albert Pujols. Now 1172 extra base hits in his career for Albert as he ties Rafael Palmaro for 12th all time. The late great Hall of Famer Harmon Killebrew up next. Speaking of majestic home runs, Killebrew, wow. Oh yeah. He likes hitting at this place. Globe Life Park 296 12 home runs. Remember he had that three home run game in the World Series. When he was with the Cardinals and Crone belts one foul. So again Holland likes to pitch inside. Mike Sosha talked about that at the bottom of the first inning and the adjustments being made if he misses out over that inside part of the plate it becomes a very hittable pitch. He needs to mix, mix in his change up more often. There's a strikeout of Crone. Second strikeout of the inning for Derek Holland. But Albert Pools with a two run home run. And it gives the Angels the lead.
Albert Pujols his 569th career home run ties him for 12th on the all time list has a two run shot that's why the Angels are in front to zip here in Arlington Nick Tropiano dealing to Bobby Wilson and a nice breaking ball gets strike one. Wilson was left at the plate in the bottom of the second when Jared Hoying was picked off of first base. Inside Tropiano so far has struck out three. And Gooby for a guy that doesn't throw really past 92 is his strikeout rate of nine per nine innings is pretty darn good. Yeah, he shows his fastball to set up his off speed pitch. Generally you think of strikeout pitchers as fastball pitchers. They throw the breaker ball to set up that high fastball like a Noah Syndergaard something like that. But it's just the opposite way for Tropiano. He shows his fastball make you at least respect it and then gets them out with off speed pitches. 2 1 coming. Jammed him. Perez barely has to move, and there's one down. Game break time. We go to LA and say hello to Chris Myers. Chris thanks uh, unless you have any more Bartolo Colon home runs you're going to have to wait for the next game break. <laughs> you believe that one? David Wright had a big game winning hit the other day he's been struggling at the plate but it's good to see him swinging it again. Sure is. Captain America. He is the face of that team. Dealing with back stenosis so it hasn't been easy for him. Rugnino Odor grounded out to short in a hotly contested play so much so it was reviewed his first time up. Jeff Bannister lost that review. Odor this will be an interesting week for him because the hearing tomorrow from that fight with Toronto so they'll, they'll have the hearing it'll probably take a day or two the Rangers have a day game Wednesday off on Thursday so the feeling is come Friday Odor will be serving some sort of suspension and the trick there is that the team can't replace him on the roster so the Rangers will have to play a man short until he comes back Yeah, and that's the thing and that's going to be a difficult task for Jeff Bannister who's done a very good job mixing the match himself. But a lot of guys being injured so far this year. I'll tell you what, Odor is one of my favorite players. This kid is strong. You're talking, he's got 19 extra base hits. He can steal bases. He plays defense very well. He's got a strong throwing arm, and he can uh, take care of himself. I see what you did there. Yeah. Popped up, though, and this is the same exact thing from the last batter. Carlos Perez barely has to move. And quickly two away for Tropiano. The best seats at every ballpark for every game. Visit MLB.com slash tickets today. Great shot of Globe Life Park. It's a fantastic night in Arlington, Texas. Glad to have you along with us. Mark Gubiza, Kevin Burkhardt, our entire FS1 crew tonight. Well, Angels Rangers NL West rivalry going on. Two nothing. L.A. on the Pujols home run. Desmond takes fastball strike one. Desmond doubled his last time up his 11th double of the year came in eighth in the American League in runs. See how quiet he is at the plate too. he's a little bit open stance himself and you would think again the outer part of the plate is open for you as a pitcher. Now beginning part of the at bat I think it is as the at bat increases as far as pitches thrown then he starts looking away and he can drive the ball very well the right field. Looked like he was going to go but takes and it's one and two and see how they line up against Desmond. A little bit of a pull on the infield but a little bit the other way in center. One two. Desmond came to Texas and signed a one year eight million dollar deal and he, he was ice cold looked out of sorts and then the last twenty nine games he's caught fire in a big way put him up in this two spot in the order it has suited him he's an aggressive swinger. Little tapper the tee on the fly and that will do a good inning from Nick Tropiano there sets the Rangers down one two three two nothing L.A.
top four. It's two nothing Angels over the Rangers. Johnny G of Atella will lead it off against Eric Collin. And he swings at the first pitch right down Adrian Beltre. Had to double check, make sure he got it. He did, and Giovatella is retired. He extended his hit streak to 12 games. His last dead bat not there. Well, right after the inning, we had a chance to catch up with Rangers manager Jeff Bannister. Jeff, uh, Holland has done a nice job of getting out of jams, but uh, Pujols can still get him out when you leave one over the plate, huh? Yes, he, yes he can. It looked like they were trying to go in, didn't quite get it in, left it out over the plate, and Pujols does what he does best, and that's hit it out of the ballpark. And Jeff, you guys are an aggressive ball club at the plate, but when you're facing a guy that has a lot of all-speed pitches, what do you guys try to do against him to be successful? Yeah, look, it's we're a fastball hitting ball club, and we've got to keep the ball in the middle of the field, and we got to back him up and and try to drive the ball in, in the opposite gap, stay on all pitches, and uh, look, we're trying to cover too much right now, and. Need to settle in and, and take what he gives us. Jeff, last one. We're talking about Desmond. Even though he made the last out of the inning, he has had quite the month. What have you seen is the difference for him? Well, it's been great balance. I think he settled in, uh, relaxed, not trying to do too much. And early on, he, he was he was trying to impress. He was trying to trying to get a lot of hits in, in one single at bat. But he's kind of settled in. He's playing center field very well for us. And. I, I think he's fine in the barrel. Jeff, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, thanks, thank Jeff. you very much. Well, he sure has. That's for sure. Talking about Desmond here. One out. Two and two to the catcher, Carlos Perez. Who got robbed. He had a, actually a bloop single the last time out, but Nomar Mazzara <laughs> let a laser beam throw to second base, and it turned out being a fielder's choice. Yeah, what an arm he has. And, and getting back to Ian Desmond, when you think about it, Robin... Robin Yount made that transition from a shortstop that was center field. Yes. It turned very good. Craig Biggio went from a catcher to second base to center field. So if you're athletic enough, especially with a strong throwing arm, you read the baseball off the bat, you can make good adjustments in center. Errors ha have been a problem always for him at shortstop. I mean, 27 and 24 the last couple of years. And yeah, he's made a couple this year, but folks around here feel like he's he's done a nice job. But he started the year and left, but I think he's better in center defensively. The line of the shield started there was sent down and now it's Desmond's roll. Three two coming and Perez hangs in and fouls it off. Left field in this ballpark is not an easy thing to do especially when you make an adjustment as an infielder to left field center field not that it's easy there either especially when the baseballs hit right at you. But even talking about which I know Josh Hamilton was in the news here today. I asked him which position in the outfield that he liked playing most here in Texas and he said center field you see the ball better. Little cue shot Odor and there's two now. Well you see the ball better why else would left field be more of a challenge. Yeah, because uh, certain points of the game early on the sun comes right down into the eyes of the, of the left fielder early on in the game and then you have to deal with this the corner and even the way it goes out into left center field so it's not an easy position and of course you know with the way the stands are set up the baseball off the bat seems to be the other catch it and it's more difficult to read off the bat for a left fielder as compared to necessarily for a center fielder. Yeah that's where the sun kind of comes over that roof. And sometimes those lights can look just like the sun. Just like in Safeco Field the LED lights it, it looks good for us I know that. Right. <laughs> it looks good for TV. Yes. Not when you're looking right into it. <laughs> Petit single this first time up the Angels shortstop and a fastball high and tight. One and two. Told you about the ballpark that the Rangers are going to get. It'll be here in this same area of Arlington, other side of the parking lot. There is a rendering. It'll be left of AT&T Field where the Cowboys play. That giant dome. It'll be somewhere around there, back of this parking lot, and eventually. With Jerry World and, and this new ball, you have to think hotels and restaurants and the whole bit, right? And you got Six Flags, the amusement park right around here. There's going to be a lot of activity in this area. I'll tell you, this place is nice, though. Globe Life Park. It is a great place to watch a game. A little hot in the summer, but that's that's Texas. Two two. Well, I remember the old stadium, which was just around there, one of those areas that's now no longer around the baseball field for the Rangers, where the baseball carry very well. I mean, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden coming in here to this ballpark I remember being in the clubhouse and thinking 
That thing is bigger than the house I grew up in, the clubhouse here. Fifth full count already for Derek Holland, and he lost Petit. So he's had a couple nice at bats, Petit. And there is a walk, the first issue tonight by Holland. That'll bring up the right fielder, Rafael Ortega, who grounded out to short his first time up. And a lot of times with Ortega, he is a very good bunter. And Adrian Beltre is trying to move in a little bit at third base, trying to take away that bunt. He could push that one down the third baseline. Tapper over the mound. Andrews will take it all his own. And so Holland, after surrendering the home run last inning, has a good fourth inning. Bottom four we go. Two nothing. Angels. Sunday FS1 UFC Fight Night returns two unstoppable undefeated bantamweights collide. Thomas Almeida takes on Cody Garbrandt plus former champ Hennen Barreo faces the dangerous knockout power of Jeremy Stevens. Sunday 530 Eastern on FS1 or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. We go to the bottom of the fourth and it's two nothing Angels. Albert Pujols career home run number 569. This is Prince Fielder leading it off. And Prince Fielder gets into one, but that's going to go foul. Well, that, that's been something that's really lacking for Prince this year, the power. Yeah, the thing is, when you watch that swing right there for Prince Fielder, as far as his timing mechanism, he's getting his foot down. See how he's getting that balance, and then the foot down, and then bam, barrel the bat, just pull that one foul. It's all about getting the timing down as far as that foot being down and clearing those hips to be able to get the barrel of the bat and just pull the foul. He has an homer since April the 20th. He's only got two on the year. And, and you know, Gooby, this guy hit 50 home runs, 46 home runs, 38 home runs. Last year he had 23, but he still drove in 98 and he hit 305. And great power to left center field. Yeah. Not only pull power, but the other way. So it's been kind of a baffling thing. This is the last home run for Fielder, as we mentioned. Off the breaking ball. And Scott Feldman and just golfed it out of there. That's what you're used to seeing from Prince. Just haven't seen it this year. That was a serious distance on that one. He's got that 2-2. Watches that fastball go outside. And the most difficult thing when you're a home run hitter, the question keeps being asked to you, why are you not hitting home runs? And all of a sudden you try to go up there and drive the ball out of the ballpark, then it becomes even more difficult. 3-2. Fielder the other way, and he's got a base hit. So he went against the shift, and he's got a leadoff single 
here in the fourth inning. Game break time. Chris Myers, what do you have for us? Tigers are playing better baseball of late. Castellanos is having an unbelievable season as far as he used to be a guy with good power but had a swing and miss in his game. Not anymore. Here's a guy with good power, Adrian Beltre, with Fielder on first, and Tropiano deals a strike. Talked about Tropiano's off speed array to count. Got 24 fastballs, 17 changeups, and 11 sliders so far. He loves the off speed stuff, and it's working for him here tonight. Boy, an interesting thing about that, when it, you know, most sites will say it's a slider, but when you talk to Tropiano, I, I say the same thing every, you know, doing the games for the Angels, that's a pretty good slider, and he goes, it's a, it's a curveball. So that's the thing, he throws a curveball like that, but he can change speeds with his. Curveball slash slider. It's like a slur, a combination of the two, and that's why it's so effective. Change in speed within the breaking ball itself. I guess you use breaking ball. That's the better term. Yeah, some guys, yeah, they have that tweener pitch, yes, right? Yes, exactly. And a lot of you know when I was pitching back in the day, everyone thought at times it was a hard curveball, but it was it was a slider. Just a matter of getting around sometime with your wrist to create a bigger break to it, but it was still basically the same pitch. And as you get along in your career, you can learn how to change speeds on your breaking ball, which becomes extremely effective. One two to Beltre and fights it off. Well, we've got a couple stars in this game that have hit a little bit, huh? I mean, both Pujols and Beltre over a thousand extra base hits. So coverage of the plate, big moment, home runs and doubles throughout their careers for both Pujols and Beltre. Goodness, one and two to him here. Outside. If you're Pujols at this point, why even bother holding on, Prince Fielder? Yeah, I mean, as soon as you, as soon as the pitcher comes at a stretch position, then you start drifting out. You should at that point, because you can see how much ground there is to cover on that right side of the infield. And Beltre does hit the ball very well that way. Beltre down to his signature one knee. So him hit a home run like that. <laughs> he's done it so many times in his career. It's amazing how he's able to do it. It's basically that tells you how strong he oh. really is. I mean, most home run hitters use their lower part of the body to create that lift and power on the swing. But he's a guy that sometimes just does it all with wrists, and he makes a lot of contact. Look at that ratio as far as strikeout per at plate appearance. When you think about a home run hitter, you would think more strikeouts. Two and two. He stays alive again. Here's what we were talking about. This is this is unbelievable. This is that's just not fair. That's what, that's when you think you fooled the hitter, and then he hits the ball out the center field. Are you kidding me? I mean, what do you do with that if you're a pitcher? Seriously. That's why I say there's always an open base potentially around with Beltre at the plate. Just try to find one. And so Beltre keeps it going. Two and two with Fielder on first. Nobody out here in the fourth. He's got great coverage on a high fastball away. You can get a fastball in on him. Letter belt to letter high. But again, when you try that, if you miss, it's gone. And he watches that just outside, and the count goes full. That's why you don't strike out a whole lot. You take that pitch. Most power hitters are geared up. They're thinking fastball a change up there. That didn't miss by a lot, and he just tracked it and took it. Ninth pitch of this at bat. Check swing, and it's going to go for a base hit against the shift. So two base hits against the Angels shift in this inning, and two on and nobody out. For Mitch Moreland. And the Angels shift quite a bit. 414 shifts coming into this game. That's six most. And we were talking to Mike Sosha before the game just about that, how all the data they have as far as giving their pitchers the best opportunity to get outs. Well, that's just a perfect piece of hitting. But again, if your second baseman is playing his normal position, that's a double play ball. He do that on purpose? He knowing him, 
He probably did. Yeah. Especially, it was such a good pitch. You know you can't hit that ball out of the ballpark. You're just trying to make contact. We showed that graphic. He doesn't strike out a lot. He committed to his swing and committed to just putting the ball on the ground. So here's Moreland, who's been struggling badly at the plate. Struck out his first time up. And swings at the first pitch and fouls it off. Moreland's 0 for his last 12. So Tropiano, who has been pitching well tonight, had Fielder 0 and 2, base hit. Had Beltre 1 and 2, a lot of foul balls. And then a base hit. Yeah, a couple starts ago, we were talking about it even before our game, Nick Tropiano had a, a number of 0-2 counts. Six of them. He ended up throwing 23 extra pitches after being ahead of the count 0-2. Ideally, if you're a pitcher, head 0-2, one or two more pitches in that at bat, and you should be able to have some type of result, either an out or the guy gets on base with a base hit. So he's had two and so far seven extra pitches thrown when you're trying to limit that and keep yourself in the game to be able to get a decision. When you see a lot of pitchers with a lot of no decisions, that means they're out of the game fifth or sixth inning where most of the majority of games are won or lost late in the ball game. Is that where the lack of a dominating fastball yeah, comes in? Yeah, exactly, because eventually they'll just lay off, you know, they're going to try to either foul off that break of ball or, or make him throw for a strike, and he hasn't necessarily thrown that off-speed pitch for a strike yet. And at 0-2 once again. Now see how many pitches it takes Tropiano to get the job done or Moreland fighting off some tough ones. Oh, again, there's one. Tracking an off-speed pitch. So the off-speed, which was working... So brilliantly, the first three innings, uh, the Rangers are appearing to catch up, even though Beltre had a little check swing. It's interesting what Jeff Bannister said after that third inning, how he said that the guys are going to try to shorten it up and think in middle of the field and go the other way on that off-speed pitch. And so far, it's been successful. Moreland, though, goes and chases, and he's down on strikes. And so the fourth strikeout for Tropiano, and there's one down. Now that swing right there, was a swing from a hitter who's struggling and was looking off speed. Because that was a 90 mile an hour fastball, not necessarily overpowering, but it was upstairs. And you could see what he was trying to do. He was taking off speed. That foot is down, and at that point, cannot catch up to a 90 mile an hour fastball. He's anticipating off speed, and that baseball's by him. Elvis Andrews will be the hitter. And it bears repeating now with one down. Part of the success for Tropiano this year. He's dominated with runners in scoring position like there is right now. There's a strike. I mean, the league, 132 against him coming into tonight. Third lowest among qualifiers in the majors. Tonight, 0 for 3. And when you think of this Ranger club against the Angels throughout the years, you always think in terms of talk about Prince Fielder, Adrian Beltre, but the one guy that's had a lot of success throughout his entire career, and you see what he's done with runners in scoring position this year, has been Elvis Andrews against the Angels. Over 300 career batting average. Uses the entire field very good as far as going the other way also, especially with two strikes. He looks in early and then looks away late. See those numbers in 136 games, 306 batting average with 42 RBI for Andrews against the Angels. Fifteen RBI on the season, certainly a chance for more here. Down low. Two and one to Elvis Andrews. Does have an eight game hitting streak. Defense would love to get two here. There's a chance for it. Petit, a little flip. Giovatella, nicely done. And Tropiano gets out of the jam. First two Rangers reached. None get any further. We're through four. Two nothing. Angels.
Top of the fifth Shane Robinson leads it off and takes strike. From Derek Holland. Robinson thought he walked in his first at bat but ended up. A strikeout victim for Holland who struck out two angels tonight. Odor. And there's one down. Well, next month, some of the biggest names in soccer converge in the United States for the 100th anniversary of one of the world's biggest tournaments. Coverage of the Copa America Centenario begins June 3rd across the networks of Fox Sports. When are you going to start reading promos? I think you do a tremendous job with them. Just Get looking out of here. At, at, at complete amazement how well you do that. They said they're going, wow, you know, I'm, I'm making notes saying, just the uh, you know the punctuation on all the, the proper spots. Your head, Fantastic. your head was straight down. You no, would, exactly. There's no chance no. of passing that card to you. No. I got my alligator arms working right now. Can't reach it. <laughs> oh goodness! Top of the order. It's Yadel Escobar. Escobar one for two, singled in the first inning, then grounded out to second base, having a nice year offensively for the Halos. Takes down low, two and zero, oh, to Escobar. Derek Holland known as Dutch Oven, big fan of the Family Guy and Dumb and Dumber movie. So you, he's that's my kind of guy right I, there. I'm with you on that. Yeah, I'm with you. I know my son has him on his fantasy team, also fantasy baseball team. Strike to Escobar. Well, Holland, it's been a tough run for Derek Holland. It really has. I mean, especially the last few starts. You know, his last start in Oakland uh, turned out pretty well. Six innings, three hits, two runs allowed. Escobar, big cut and a miss. But then the two starts before that, two and a third, eight hits, five runs against the White Sox. And then at Toronto, who the team that just gives him fits, two and two thirds, eleven hits, eleven runs. Well, he's trying to. Let's get back to finding some sort of a groove. I don't, I don't know why he doesn't throw that fast more, more often. When you're seeing 93 in, in a in a hitter's count, and the hitters are late on it, then 94, he seems to be trying to establish in cutting that fastball in. 93, 94 from a lefty is very difficult to square up. Mm. I think he's got to go back to that mentality of going after guys and challenging them upstairs. Just like that one, you go upstairs at 93. He's got good mechanics. Stays back on the pitching rubber very well. Go back to power fastball up, followed by a change up down and away. Well, Brokel does a nice job as far as the pitching coach for the Rangers. And he got him on your call, 94 miles an hour. It's kind of an angry 94 upstairs with that fastball. That's what he has to get back to. Now he's a very good competitor. You remember a few years ago in the postseason, he was fantastic for the Rangers in their runs to the World Series. Good fastball, four seam fastball above the belt for a swing and miss against a guy that doesn't strike out a lot. And you know Escobar. You see, he was not expecting that. So the third strikeout for Holland, and now it's Mike Trout. And there's another one. Well, you can see that sound of that pop on the mitt. What do you think about seven combined strikeouts in the last five starts? That's just, you would think when you look at his stuff, that's almost impossible to do. Trout ripped a double last time. This one hit on the screws as well, and it falls in for a base hit. So a two out single for Mike Trout. And that'll bring up Albert Pujols, who has done the damage in this game. A two run, monstrous home run in the third inning. 569 of his career, which ties him for 12th. All time with Rafael Palmero. It'll be real interesting to see if Derek Holland goes back inside. That's what he was trying to do, and he missed out over the plate and went a long way. Again, Albert has had a tough time pulls hitting low pitches all year. He's trying to go upstairs, not a good combination. There's a strike. Going down low with the off speed to Pools. Trout doesn't run as much as he used to. But he still is five of six on stolen bases. Can't think there's any way in the world to be going here with Pools hitting one to Fort Worth last time. 
So here is what happened in that third greater coverage of baseball sponsored by T-Mobile and bam. Well, when you get that sound and then the, the distance off that bat of pull holes, you can see why he has that many home runs. Oh one comes inside misses inside one and one to Albert Pools. Hit hard but right at Odor playing the shift on the left side of the bag and Pools. Is retired, score at four to three. So the trap single he's left on, but Holland's through five. We're halfway home here in Arlington. Two nothing, Angels. From Arlington, Texas. Glad to have you aboard on FS1. Mark Gubiza, Kevin Burkhart, and our entire FS1 crew tonight. As Nomar Mazzara will lead it off in the home fifth. 21 year old star in the making. Did strike out his first time up, but had a heck of an assist earlier in this game. We've seen a little bit of everything from him already. Diving catches, robbing home runs, throwing people out on the bases, power. Average. I am trying to think of who he reminds me of, though, with that that wide, wide open stance. Can't. can't I've, place I've it. been thinking about that for a while. Last time down here, doing an Angel game, looking at the same thing. It's, it's, it's a, it's a great swing. It's a quiet swing, but I haven't seen many guys with that open up a stance like that. Checks his swing, and he goes around. Says Angel Hernandez. So it's one and two. Tell you one thing, you leave it exactly where it is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to have that type of coverage to be open up like that, the foot is down, and you have to have quick hands. There's a lot of movement in the footwork as far as his, his plant foot and his hands before he makes a pass at the baseball. See right there, you can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to hit the ball the other way. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. If you try to pull that baseball if anything you're going to either miss it or you're going to pop that one up in the infield instead he fought off a pretty good pitch and hits a foul to left. Yeah, we told you Missouri pretty much sprays it to all fields. In his early career that's what he's shown. Taken inside at the Angels on the infield. 
They shift him to the right side big time. Only Escobar is left. Outfield is pretty much straight away. And when you look at his, his lead foot, it's almost out of the batter's box. It's that far away. And he brings it in as the pitch is going to be made. 2 2. And he got him. So Tropiano goes with the off speed again. And it's been a gem in his fifth strikeout tonight. That is a perfect pitch for Tropiano against Mazzara. Talked about that open stance. And then that changeup away was perfect. Tropiano so far in this game is mixed and matched extremely well. His split finger fastball has been good. Change up excellent. His curveball changing speed with that. And then when he gets the hitters looking for all speed, fastball, and then that quick footwork for a pickoff. Now it's Jared Hoying making his debut and smacking one foul down the right field line. So Hoying. Well, you see that change up right there. He tried to stay back. He fouled the last fastball away. Same plane. Backed it up with a change up. Very difficult to keep your hands back long enough to make contact. Great movement. But Hoying, yeah, the Rangers made a couple of moves. Stubbs and Chu to the DL. And Joey Gallo is back. And Hoying making his debut. A great spring. Bannister raved about him. You know, his work ethic. One of these guys getting a chance at age 27. And unfortunately for him, he reached on an error his first time and then was promptly picked off. Jeff Bannister just wants home plate umpire Will Little to check down at third base. But again, you don't have to do that as a home plate umpire. If you feel that the batter made a swing, you can call it. You don't have to ask for help. One, two, breaking balls inside and low. Take another look. Again, another open stance for a Ranger hitter and then clearly crossing that plate for a swing. 2 2. Hoying is a 10th round pick back in 2010 at the University of Toledo. And guy being rewarded for working hard. He's been on fire, hitting 319 overall in AAA this year. This stays alive with his stance open stance as his hands lower you can open, you can read the word Texas on his uniform as a pitcher you're seeing that you so you're thinking all right I could with his hands that low I could try to throw a fastball upstairs but he's able to bring his hands up when the pitch is being thrown to make contact think back somebody who had a similar stance like that it, it, one yep. guy that, like I'd always go back to is is Harold Baines. Mm. I guess in, in many a times that outer part of the plate was so open early, but then late he would hit a rocket right back up the middle at you. I was thinking Eric Davis, the former Red, only the righty. Yeah, Jack Clark, same thing, uh -huh. open stance like that. And if you threw him a fastball, the, you you weren't thinking too well. He had crazy fast hands no, and wrists, un right? Unbelievable power, how quick he was on anybody's fastball. Three and two. And he got him. Pulled the string again to Tropiano. Strikeout number six. And yeah, bringing back that whole whiff percentage for him on all speed pitches. 43.2. Still getting better in this game. Bobby Wilson, the catcher, and the number nine hitter tonight for Jeff Bannister. Tropiano got into trouble in the fourth, allowed the first two runners on, then got a strikeout and a double play. And now back to back K's as a breaking ball sails away. See his hands, you see that Texas, and he's trying to track the baseball. Then all speed, you see how the hands have opened up, and so did the hips. The Tropiano, known as Nitro, has been throwing the ball. With some off speed instead of the gasoline from the Nitro. How did he get the Nitro name? Well, he got it when he was a member of, of the Houston Astros in the minor leagues. So it was more of a situation where he got the fastball by guys. And obviously with the name Nick Tropiano, the Nitro. It works. Yes. Went to Stony Brook High School. Yeah, he's a West, college, I should West say. Islip, New York kid. Yeah, you're neck of the woods, right? Yeah. Pretty close. Uh, he's not too far from New Jersey. Fifth round pick of the Astros, as you mentioned. The third Stony Brook alum to pitch in the majors. To give you the commercial break to think of the other two. <laughs> we'll give it to you. And nice sliding grab. Ortega had a long way to roll. Tropiano in a groove. Nice fifth inning. Rangers down in order. It's still 2 0. Angels.
Budweiser game summary looks like this Albert Pujols career home run number 569 ties him for 12th all time and that has been the offense Tropiano has pitched very very well Hollins hasn't been too bad himself been a good ball game tonight from both, Globe Life Park both have thrown the ball pretty much everywhere they've wanted to except that one pitch to Pujols from Derek Holland chance for Desmond and there is one away as Crone flies I told you uh, we're talking about Tropiano in the third uh, player from Stony Brook to pitch in the major leagues and we left you hanging with the commercials so the, other, the other two Joe Nathan great closer and Tom Kohler pitcher for the Marlins currently Wow, he's got a good arm himself and, and Nathan's working his way back to the majors very good closer. When you think about it, he was a position player. I know. Before turning over to be a pitcher. Here's Johnny Giavatella. He extended his hit streak to 12 games with a single in the second inning. Didn't really get a chance to talk about it because I think we were talking to Mike Sosha at the time and then swung at the first pitch his last time for a ground out to third. He swung at the first pitch both times. But you see him every day, Mark. He, he is a he's kind of a fun player to watch. Scrappy. Little energizer, yeah, yeah, high energy guy. Exactly right, Kevin. He's really helped this club out early in the season when he was struggling. He was lifting that front shoulder, dipping the back shoulder, lifting the baseball. And Dave Hansen, the hitting coach for the Angels, just worked on a drill with him just to hit down on the baseball, hit down on the baseball, and that's why you're seeing the results now with a 12-game hit streak. And he does bring a lot of energy. And when he's on base, he's looking in that dugout, he's trying to dance, and everyone else is following along right with him. One and two from Derek Holland and there's a strike paints the corner with ninety three. He's really used his fastball a lot more since you called for it. Yeah, I mean ago. when you have a fastball like that there's no reason to try to trick hitters. I know it's it's the, it's the pitch most hitters want to hit but when you locate a fastball that is the very best pitch. I, even Jim Palmer was in the booth next to me the last couple of days in Hall of Famer and every time we talk what's the best pitch in baseball a well located fastball. Doesn't matter if you have a split, a knuckleball, a slider, curveball, it's a well located fastball, and that's what you saw from Holland. A couple quick outs by Holland here in this sixth inning, and his, his pitch count is still manageable at 85. So, Carlos Perez coming off a career night, five RBIs for the Angels yesterday, and he jams him, popped him up. Boying. Andrews Hoying makes the catch. It's a one, two, three inning for Holland, the first of the game for him. Two nothing still, Angels in front.
has pitched a gem so far. He's only been in trouble really once, uh, majorly all game. Got out of that with a big double play. Three Ranger hits allowed. But now this will be the challenge for him, Mark, and, right, as we go to the sixth inning. And that's the thing here with Tropiano, that third time through the batting average over 300. That's why you're looking down in the bullpen right now for the Angels, and they have action. Mike Trout retreats. Odor gave it a ride, but not far enough. One pitch and one away. And the reason why those numbers seem to have gone up uh, prior to last start, last start was a different story for Tropiano. It's the timing. He's not, you know, the hitters make adjustments during the course of the game. He stays that same course. And sometimes when they're tracking that break of ball, he hasn't gone to his fastball enough to set back the break of ball once again. I have to say, you know, last start in tonight, Nick Tropiano has, has jumped up a level, hasn't he? No, there's no doubt. And Mike Sosha, we, he was talking about him today and when we were talking before the game. He's. He had a big smile on his face considering what this rotation could have been and now the way it is right now situated up and Tropiano's done a very good job pitching in these in big moments for him out of the rotation. Weaver next to Mike Sosha threw the ball very very well yesterday so they're starting to get some length in games from starters something they weren't getting a whole lot of that at the beginning of the year. A little cue shot from Desmond down to first and Pujols will take it. And so Tropiano, two up and two down. I think every time we mention something, they just go this the complete opposite, I think, so far. We mentioned Pools not hitting a line drive, he hits one out. And then you mentioned Tropiano. We, you know, we talked about how he struggled third time through. So far, very good pitches, especially that one to Desmond, although he do, does have some work here now with the Prince Fielder, and then you got Adrian Beltre on deck. Well, I mean, clearly the. The Angels are happy that what we're saying is not coming true because the opposite has been good for them as Fielder takes down low for a ball. Fielder tonight, one for two with a single, went the other way against that shift. Down to Pujols, an easy one for Tropiano. I see that third time through the order and I say, I don't care, yeah. Mark Ubiza. <laughs> Impressive for Tropiano. He's through six. 2-0 Angels in front. Pulse two run home run the offense in this one and it's two nothing Angels we head to the seventh it'll be seven eight nine in the order Gregorio Petit swinging at the first offering from Derek Holland and he fouls it straight back Holland pitched well tonight four strikeouts and when you think about his year this year this is pretty good territory for him the longest outing he had was the second start of the year six and two thirds at Seattle. Well, Jeff Bannister has to feel real good about his effort so far tonight, especially the life on his fastball. 
better velocity in this game than I've seen the entire season from Derek Holland as, as far as consistency with the velocity. One one from Holland and Petit. This one's given a ride, but comfortably under it is Desmond for the first set. You know, think about this starting pitching for the Rangers, right? I mean, they're currently starters ERA coming into tonight. They were first in the American League. This doing nothing to hurt that. And then today, Jeff Banderger says officially, yeah, you Darvish back from Tommy John surgery will start on Saturday against the Pittsburgh Pirates. How's that for a shot in the arm? And all indications are he has his A stuff back. We got him and Cole Hamels. You have a dynamic one two punch for the Rangers. Lefty, righty, a lot of swing and misses and some length in games. I mean, that's an unbelievable. Now you got Hamels and Darvish at the top and the way the rest of these guys have performed. I mean, think about it too. You know, the Angels have had problems with their starters trying to figure it out, injuries, things like that. Even A.J. Griffin, who's now hurt, and Cesar Ramos, who threw on Saturday, fill in fifth starters have given this team a great amount of success. I think it all comes down to the fact is when you when you're a pitcher and you're on this Ranger club, you feel that if I can go five or six innings with their offense and their defense, they got a lot of coverage in, as far as their defense in the infield, especially that you have a chance to win because they're going to score a run. So it gives you that confidence that you can make a mistake or two because they're going to come back and help you out. Out Sun and Lowe's a two and one Rafael Ortega. That's Martin Perez part of that starting rotation having a fine year. The bullpen has been the issue. That's for sure. That's Ramos who threw on Saturday. Imagine that he would get bumped for Darvish. Colby Lewis has thrown the ball well too. Very much so. Ortega goes the other way and he's got his first base hit of the night. And he is a threat to steal. Three stolen bases on the season. He's got good speed. This is a good piece of hitting, really, for Ortega to stay back on that baseball. Hits it by Beltre. Not an easy thing to do, even though he has no chance to get to that point. But you're so used to seeing him catching anything, even remotely close to him. Angels. You know, I mean, it's Mike Sosha. They've played this way for a long time, but they do play still like a National League team. They lead the American League with sacrifice bunts. The number nine hitter up. Wonder if that comes through the thought process at all. Even though there's one out, it's not a bad idea because then you get somebody in scoring position for a guy coming up behind him. And you know, Escobar, that has been very good as far as driving in runs, did it really well last year, batting in an RBI position for the Nationals. Sure did. Robinson 0 for 2 tonight. Struck out and grounded out. And Ortega can run so a gapper could get him home. Allen trying to finish his outing strong here. Ooh, good throw and it's close but Ortega got back in man that was close. And the one thing Mitch Moreland's looking in but they have no chance to be able to look at a replay because they lost that after a challenge in the first inning. So even if they feel that they got him even though it looked like he got his hand in there they have no more challenges unless they ask for a crew chief challenge. And of course, they'll usually acquiesce, but I, you don't have to look at a play like that if no. you don't want to. You say, no, we're just pitching the next pitch. That will be Ted Barrett's call, who is over at first base tonight. Well, look, and we're taking leading. Oh, man. Back to back, and he just got out. He was clearly leaning that time. Yeah, I mentioned 24 career pickoffs for Derek Holland. Although he is susceptible to a stolen base. If you guess right, and he was definitely guessing that he was going to go home, and that's an even closer play. Again, getting back, going to that back part of the base, a longer tag, getting that hand barely in. And Hollins has allowed 41 stolen bases in 65 attempts in his career, which is about 37%. So you can steal if you guess right on first movement. Coming home, and Ortega thought he was going to first. He went back that time. That just shows you how confused he is right now. <laughs> After almost getting picked off twice, I think you would. <laughs> Kenny Rogers, who was another really good left-handed pitcher over the years with the Rangers, had an unbelievable pickoff move himself. Andy Pettit, who's had a great one with the Yankees. Bobby Wilson, the catcher, by the way, so far has limited opportunity, but has been good at throwing out two of four potential base stealers. So it's Pretty good combination right now out there for Texas. 
in this part of the order for the Angels, you're trying to create an opportunity to score, so you might be more apt to be more aggressive. Ortega dancing around. Boy, it's fun to watch this matchup now, isn't it? I mean, he's leaning, he's going back when he's pitching home. That's why I always wanted to be left-handed, so I didn't have to worry about Ricky Henderson and all and Vince Coleman and all those guys. But you got Ricky Henderson out. Didn't he only hit like 219 or yeah, something like that somehow. against you? I had no idea, but I know he did hit a leadoff home run against him. That's the only thing I remember. The fans are into it too. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like you know the next act yeah. that's coming. When it's an opponent doing that, they're booing the pitcher for taking too long to throw the ball home. <laughs> That's the old step off, quick throw over. Moreland is able to catch that right away. That might have been real, real close. Meanwhile, it's two and one to Shane Robinson, who must feel like he's been at the plate for 38 minutes. But as a hitter, this is what you want. You want a distracted pitcher. More, yes. You're more apt to try to be quicker to the plate, elevate a fastball, get something to drive if you're Shane Robinson. Coming home with it, and it blows it by Robinson. 93. He's really used that fastball well, second half of this game. Yeah, we think about percentages of fastballs thrown it towards this part of the game as compared to the beginning. And there's life on that fastball. Not only is it 93, but it's that late life upstairs. Very difficult. As a hitter, your eyes are wide open. You think you can track and hit it, but it's by you. Two and two with Ortega off first. There he goes. Pitch coming home, and it's fouled off. See, it's all about guessing right on first movement. That's the only thing you can do against a lefty pitcher. That's a great jump. If, if, if there's no contact made, he's going to be in scoring position. Boy, Cliff Lee, a guy that has pitched a lot of years in the big leagues, too. He played with Texas also. Had a slide step. He didn't have a great move, but he was extremely quick to the play. So you couldn't necessarily go on first movement against him. At what point when you're on the mound does it become a distraction. See a lot of these calls are from the bench. Me personally I got I got one out right now. I'm not worried about him. I'm, I'm worried about the hitter because if I get him I got two outs I can mix and match. Robinson drives it to right. Mazzara backtracking makes the play and there's two down. See that's that's the trouble you run into. He almost got that one over Mazzara's head. What, if there's no outs it's a whole different ball game with one out. You're only one pitch away from two outs and then. With Escobar up, even if he had stolen second base, you can make him hit your pitch and make him expand the zone. Jeff Bannister is going to come out and make a move. He does not want Holland facing Escobar, the righty. Uh, this game, the way it's been going, well pitched, well played, and Bannister is going to go to the pen. So Derek Holland's going to match his season high, going six and two thirds innings, and he pitched well. And the former closer, Sean Tollison, will come in in a in a big spot here in the seventh. Nice hand for Derek Holland as he comes off.
Sean Tolleson in his first appearance since being demoted from the closers role and he's got you Escobar the runner on Angels up two, and he deals a fastball upstairs so Tolleson last time we saw him was Tuesday at Oakland he gave up a walk off grand slam to Chris Davis he blew three of his last four save opportunities and that's why he's here right now but still a relatively big spot in this game. Yeah batting average opponents get 343 there goes Ortega and Ortega dives great tag. He's out. What a tag. Wilson with the throw. Applied beautifully on the tag. And Ortega is caught stealing. Wow, Odor. Nicely done. Getting over. Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. Visit MLB.tv for more details. It's another fantastic read, by the way. How are there 400 devices? That's yeah. the one I'm really baffled by. I'm still trying to figure out one, let alone 400. <laughs> Here's Adrian Beltre, bottom of the seventh. Nick Tropiano still in there. Beltre with a big swing. But the ballpark's going to hold this one. Ortega camps out, and there's one away. So Tropiano, his last time out, Gooby, a career-high seven innings pitched, and he's matching that here tonight. He looks great. That's especially when we go back to what we said about the third time through, what he did in the sixth, and he only threw five total pitches, and a good pitch there, too, to Beltre off the end of the bat, kept it in the ballpark. That's his line from Wednesday when he beat the Dodgers. At 100 pitches right now, so you know he's getting near the end of his rope. But he's got Moreland up, who he struck out twice so far tonight. Down low for a ball. That's that's his great location again. Just like. The pitch before to Beltre. Fastball away off the end of the bat. You see how it's towards the end of the bat. He didn't mean stayed away from the inner half of the plate. And that's mm -hmm. why he's been successful with his fastball. Moreland checks his swing, goes around, says Angel Hernandez. Moreland if, if has you're not a left handed well. if you're a left handed batter and you have a check swing, don't even Angel's just going. Oh yeah. That's old school. That's like Ken Kaiser back in the day when I was playing. That was an automatic. If it's a check swing, yeah, you went. Hit hard right at Pujols. 
I mean you couldn't hit it any harder than that but when you're in a slump those things happen and there are two away. Exactly but if you're Mitch Moreland though you have to feel good about that swing even though it's an out and you're going to go back to the dugout and you're, it's going to be an 0 for 1 at bat but this baseball was seared right at Albert you talk about getting on top of a baseball inner half of the plate that's a perfect swing. Right at pool hall so two down for Tropiano. He's Albert retired Albert, nine in a row. Sorry, Gooby. Albert's still trying to breathe after trying to get that long drive. Better him than me. So nine in a row set down for Tropiano, and he misses away to Andrews. He got Andrews to grind into a huge double play. The Rangers had the first two on in the fourth. And he struck out Moreland and got a 6 4 3 double play to end that threat. And since then, he's been money. But knowing he is near the end of his rope at 106 pitches, the Angels getting some bullpen action. Greg Malley. Left-hander now standing and watching. But what you can just see when you watch Tropiano throw the baseball right now, there's a lot of confidence in his even throwing his fastball as much as he had. He's made that adjustment. A lot of off-speed early. Now you're seeing some fastballs. Although this is one of those counts he likes to go back to off-speed. Andrews back up the box and a two-out single. Talk about a perfect swing. That's back to back good swings. That might make Mike, Mike, Mike Sosha move around a little bit. And here he comes right now on cue. That's a great swing by Andrews up the middle. Line drive by Moreland, the batter before. Well, Nomar Mazar is going to get a chance as a tying runner of the play, but he's going to face the lefty. Mike Sosha is going to go to the side armor, it looks like here, and Greg Malley. And there it is. Tropiano. Stony Brooks finest outstanding tonight but he's going to leave with a runner on he's going to need some help from his friends here two nothing Angels Rangers threatening as Sosha goes to the pen. Starts from Nick Tropiano, six and two thirds, but he leaves with a runner on first, and Nomar Mazar will be the hitter. He'll have to face the lefty side armor here, and Greg Molly. And Molly's fastballs around 87 to 91 range, can touch 92 slider changeup. A well, good test for the young Mazara. He takes strike one. And if you're at home, you're thinking, you know, if you're an Angel fan, why would you take out Tropiano? But with a couple swings like that, that were hit hard. Generally, when you're in that 95 to 105 pitch area for Tropiano, that's when it doesn't get quite as crisp, his stuff. Breaking ball just missed. It's funny perception, right? I mean, the other night, take Shoemaker out, and he was dealing. But so she said, hey, I just saw a couple things. Yeah. But tonight, it, it, it feels a little different for some reason. And, and so she's saying it's not about the pitch number. It's about some swings and when 
do you think he's going to start to lose it? But all of a sudden, the Rangers have come to life as Mazzara the other way. Stopping at second is Andrews, so now the tying runs aboard, and Tropiano will have to sweat it out. Probably have a pinch hitter now, too. I think so. Yeah, we will. Jared Hoying, the rookie in his debut tonight, got the start, but he won't get a chance right now. It'll be Ryan Rua who will be the hitter. And this is a good piece of hitting. Again, a lot of times with, with Mally, you can see his reaction. He elevates pitches, and Mazzara did a nice job. You talk about staying back and letting the baseball travel. Great angle right here, guys, to be able to let that baseball travel deep in the strike zone and hits the ball the other way for a base hit. Mike Sosha with Rua coming up will make the switch. Rua the right hander so he says I don't want a lefty anymore going to the pen he is going to go to the right hander himself it'll be Mike Morin coming in. Ryan Rua, the pinch hitter for Jeff Bannister, taking out the rookie Jerry Hoyne. Then Mike Sosha goes and gets Malley because Rua destroys left handers. But against Mike Morin, Rua's one for two with a home run. Yeah, he's the notorious first ball, fastball hitter. Mike Morin, a very good plus changeup. Strike one. Yeah, I remember that home run. I thought he hit it was right at the right center field. It was an elevated fastball. He tried to sneak a fastball by him. You, it's very difficult to sneak a fastball by Ryan Rua. He is very strong. Tying runs aboard in the seventh. Popped up. Ortega and Wright going to call, and that will do it. Morin gets the best of Rua this time. It gets out of the inning. Well, the Rangers. Strand a couple more. Angels pitching the shutout.
Service delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live at HD and over 400 supported devices. Visit MLB.tv for details. So the Angels bullpen does a heck of a job to get out of a big jam and help Nick Tropiano. And with that, we go to the eighth and top of the order for Los Angeles. You know, Escobar, one for three tonight. Sean Tolleson came in and didn't have to do anything because the runner was caught stealing. Ryan Rui with that pinch hit was retired but he stays in the game in left field. It's the only changes thus far to short Andrews knocks it down to his feet can't make the transfer. Be a base hit for you know, Escobar another multi hit game for Escobar leading the club as far as hits. See how special that Andrews is as a shortstop this season in particular. Four errors made on the entire season. He's got great range, but in the transfer, like you mentioned, Kevin, unable to get the grip of the baseball and wisely holds on and does not try to throw. Sometimes you'll try to throw it, even though you don't have the right grip. Let it go and move forward, especially for a club that will roll into a double play. That's what you got to think in terms of. So here's Trout. A couple more hits tonight. Takes strike one. Trout, a double a run scored and continues his hot month. It's fouled off. You know the thing about Trout is we continue to watch his evolution, and you see him obviously every day, Gooby. This year, he, he second most pitches per plate appearance in the major league. So he can be aggressive. He can put up dynamite numbers, but at times he's been completely patient too. Yeah, I mean he, he sees a lot of pitches. He reads pitches so well. You know he's a, he's a sponge. He sits there and talks with Albert Pujols all day long. When they're not at the plate or in the all deck circle in the dugout those two were together all the time and you can't get a better teacher than Albert Pujols what to look for what pitchers tendencies are you get plenty of printouts from computers but to have somebody tell you those things in a dugout is invaluable one and two to Trout and it's two and two just continues to evolve and get better you know cutting down to strikeouts the last two years hitting for power now being even more patient when he has to be. And believe me he will set up hitters uh, pitchers he will swing on occasion at the first pitch when he's guessing along with the pitcher. Foul tip it's caught and so Trout is retired here. So Tolleson went cheddar and got him. Game break time let's go to Chris Myers. First baseman Albert Pujols. Thanks Chris look forward to the whip around after this. John Lackey the former Cardinal. There's always that's a great rivalry to begin with really the Cardinals is. and Cubs. Cubs have come back down to earth a little bit. Pools strike. Well you would think so at some point I mean they were to crush oh. the run differential was off the charts. I mean as far as they weren't giving up runs they were scoring runs they were catching the baseball doing everything extremely well on their Joe Madden. Escobar back Escobar by the way now 19 multi hit games you hit on it came into the league into today second in the league. Pujols has the offense tonight he's got a two run home run in the third his 569th career long ball good for 12th all time watches that one outside. And it's one and one to Albert Pujols. Nine home runs on the year for Albert. Hit 40 of them last year. But even though the average is way down from what we're used to, the power is clearly still there. Tollison's outside. This is what we got tonight. It's been well pitched and well played, and Holland made a mistake, and Pujols annihilated it. Yeah, that ball drifted just enough for the inner part of the plate to hit that ball that far for Albert Pujols. Again, it's all about run production, driving in runs. That's all it really matters at this point for Albert. 
Fastball, 93, caught the corner, two and two. I go back, Kevin, to a player in my era, Joe Carter was a guy that hit around 230, 240, 250, but then you look up, 110, 120 RBI, 30 home runs. That's their job. They're not table setters. They clean up the table with a big fly. That plays. 2-2, check swing, did he go? He did not. I think with pools, you're just spoiled. Because for years, the guy's hitting 330, 340. And so when you see the average down, you're just spoiled with the type of production he has had. Yeah, so you're close. right. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a guy that, at the right moments, has hit the ball hard. Mm -hmm. Still surprised. And he still chuckles at that whole line line drive percentage, by the way. By the way, I, I brought I, that up to him. More. I realize. Because as soon as I said it, he hit it a mile. Yeah. <laughs> His thing is this look up at the end of the season you're going to see what my numbers are 30 35 home runs 100 RBI and as you can see comes through in the clutch like right now pay off to Pujols from Tolleson Escobar staying close one thing the Angels do they will run 3 2 with one out even though Escobar doesn't have great speed as no stolen bases the season be caught one time. He will probably be going on the pitch. There he goes. Bull hole swings and into the stands. What did that get Wilson? Sure did. Boy, Bull hole's over to check on Bobby Wilson. I remember a couple years ago there was a collision at the plate. Mark Teixeira ran into Bobby Wilson, hurt him, and then a couple, you know, a few weeks later, a backswing got him right on top of that catching mask. See on the follow through right here for Albert. And just back on the lower block, this bag by the ear. And up on the shoulder area against Bobby. So we give him a minute. He says he's okay, and we'll do it again. Three and two to Pools. Escobar off first, one out in the eighth. There goes Escobar. Swing and a miss. Throw down by Wilson in time. Strike him out. Throw him out. It's a nice recovery for Bobby Wilson on the throw after getting hit by Albert Pujols. Back swing. Some play. And it keeps this game at two to nothing. in the world converge on historic Oakmont Country Club for the 116th U.S. Open Championship. Live coverage Thursday, June 16th on FS1 continues through the final hole on Sunday, June 19th on Fox. 
or you can watch the entire tournament live on Fox Sports Go. Look forward to that. This has been a great ball game tonight from Arlington. Mark Ubiza, Kevin Burkhardt, our entire FS1 crew. It's always my favorite tournament at, at U.S. Open because it's such a difficult track at that point where they put the rough that's so high. I couldn't even imagine shooting under 200 on one of those courses. You're just being a, a company guy. Yeah. <laughs> But it is a great tournament. It'll be fun, that's for sure. Here's Bobby Wilson. So isn't it always the fact that a guy who makes a great defensive play leads off, and just like he did, here is Wilson against a new pitcher in the eighth. It's Fernando Salas. And Salas has been very good for the Angels so far this season. 21 and a third. Been throwing the ball very well. 20 strikeouts. Fastballs, 89 to 93 range. Very good changeup and a good solid slider. Of course, with the injury to Houston straight, as we told you earlier, could be back maybe even later this week. We'll see. He's getting close, bottom line. You know, Joe Smith has been closing. So everybody moves up. Smith had done a great job until Saturday when the rough one allowed a home run to Matt Wieters lost in the game. He had been stellar up to that point. Here's Wilson. One and two. From Salas. The one description of the ass guys and the coaching staff for the Angels about Fernando Salas is that sneaky fastball. He hides the fastball behind his back there to last second. It's more of a short arm tight throw. Just got a piece. Ken Hill used to throw that way. Kenny mm -hmm. Hill was a guy that was short armor, very difficult to read out of his hand. Salas, Giovatello, long throw, not in time. Bobby Wilson ends rallies and he starts them for the Rangers. And the big thing, he got a lot of confidence from Jeff Benison to put him up in this spot here in the eighth inning. Number nine hitter, get a chance to swing the bat, ends up getting an infield hit out of it. See the defense set up and right over the head. One sec at five, Fernando Salas. Even though Giovatello has improved quite a bit defensively, you're not going to throw out. Bobby Wilson runs pretty well for a catcher going down the line, especially when you know you got a chance at an infield hit. So a leadoff runner on for the Rangers. Down by two in the eighth. Back to the top of the order we go with Rugnit Odor. 0 for 3 tonight. First pitch swinging again and popped it up. Pujols, one down. And when you're identified as a guy that's going to be swinging first pitch looking fastball, that's when you're seeing all speed pitches throughout this game. From Tropiano then and Fernando Salas to a first pitch slider to got him out in front. He popped it up. Odor has swung at the first pitch three times tonight. Made outs all three times. I mean, he's aggressive. He's not going to walk. It's, that's who he is. But to your point, maybe that would be the time with a little discretion. Yeah, especially when you when a reliever comes in the game, you know what's at stake here. You're not just going to groove a fastball. You're going to throw, especially when you have a good slider and changeup. You might want to see one pitch to put yourself in a fastball count. So now it's Ian Desmond. Good power from Desmond. Six home runs. Little rain start, starting to fall here in Arlington. Door after he made that out. He's top five in the league, fewest pitches seen per at bat. And this rain wasn't supposed to come till a couple hours from now. It's coming early. So uh, it's here. Desmond uh, 90 miles an hour, and it's one and one. Desmond tonight, double and three trips. Look at the lights out in right center field. Left side, base hit. And so the Rangers have two on with one out, and here comes the heart of the order. And this is exactly what the Rangers do so well, coming back late in games, especially with such a powerful lineup. One through nine and a solid bench for Jeff Bannister to go to if need be. 
Desmond just continues to swing the bat well. Brings his hands inside, got the barrel of the bat, gets up between short and third for his second hit of the game. And now it's Prince Fielder with two on, one down. Fielder tonight, one for three. That base hit was against the shifts with the Angels will employ here. But the difference. Giovatella had been going be way back in right field. Now trying to turn two, he moves up a little closer. We'll see that plays here. Yeah, exactly. So there's less room to be able to catch one of those hard hit baseballs by Prince Fielder this moment, playing more shallow in the infield. Takes inside. Fielder has killed Salas in his career. Five of eight with two home runs. That's why you're seeing two pitches that aren't real close to the strike zone. You're trying to see a hitter that's going to be aggressive against a pitcher with a lot of success. But so far, Prince has done a nice job of not chasing and helping him out. No, you can't put him on with Beltre on deck. That's the that's the thing. No. Looks like at least for the moment the rain is easing up. Hopefully that was just a little spurt. Desmond on first. He's single. Wilson on first. Also single. Rangers down two, one out in the eighth. Two and zero. Oh. Three and zero. Oh. And there's no doubt Prince Fielder will get the green light. And that guy is on deck with those numbers with runners in oh. scoring position. 3 and 0 to Prince Fielder. Ball four upstairs with a fastball and the bases are loaded. Base is loaded Adrian Beltre. Going to get a pinch runner for Fielder. It's Hanser Alberto coming into the game. So Alberto will be on first. Would you believe this is the first time all night that a Ranger has been on third base? Tropiano threw the ball exceptionally well throughout. And now you have the most dangerous guy on the Ranger Club in this spot. With one away. Inside and low, 1 and 0 oh to Beltre. Adrian is 1 for 2 tonight, a single, a walk. Yeah, the two guys we talked about in the opening Trout, solid game, and then this man right here, Adrian Beltre, up for the Rangers. 2 and 0. Oh. The rain picks up again. Two and one. What that could cause now is an infielder, the slick baseball, if it's hit on the grass, if you're trying to turn two, you might not get that quite that grip on the baseball as you try to turn a double play. Same thing if Beltre hits a ball in the alley, it will skip. And gets to the wall, potentially giving the Rangers lead with one swing for Beltre. Two and one to Beltre. Swing and a miss. Took something off and it worked like a charm and it count now goes to two and two. The old pitching backwards. Mm. Instead of getting a fastball in a hitter's count, you get a slider in a hitter's count and no contact made. Hold off the baseball, the head move. Very difficult to make contact. Two two. And that's that zone fastball up and in. He, he got that in pretty good on Beltre, but if it drifts out, that's a dangerous spot. That's why that conversation by Carlos Perez and Fernando Salas right away. Just don't let that fastball drift out because this man right here is an RBI machine.
See, I, I think it was the right pitch inside. He was setting up away, but it's still that fastball in is the pitch. Two two. Broken bat up the middle. Diving grab by Giovatella. And the runners stay put. Boy, he has improved, and he worked a lot with Ron Washington down in Louisiana during the offseason, working on his defensive skills to get better. The Angels knew he can hit. They were hoping to improve enough defensively to make a play like that. Flying it through the air, Johnny Giovatella makes an unbelievable play on that line drive. How strong is Beltre? His bat is shattered and still almost got that through the infield. Really unbelievable. And so a huge out by Salas, but he's not out of trouble yet. The go ahead runs on base for Mitch Moreland. He's been struggling mightily. He's 0 for 3 tonight, but the last ball he hit was an absolute laser beam right at Albert Pujols, and, and maybe he's coming out of it. And that's what you, you hope for if you're the Rangers right now, to carry that confidence, even though it was an out, and you go back, it's an 0 for 1. It was a very good, productive swing. First pitch swinging off of Salas, stays with it to Pujols, and he gets out of the jam. Wow. Couple. That was an absolute rocket. Hopefully he's okay. He couldn't even throw the ball. He underhanded it over. Hopefully Fernando Salas. All right. Look, the Gatorade Frost, cool under pressure moment. It's him. Base is loaded. He needed two outs, and he got him. When you think about the part of the lineup right here, especially the run producer that Beltre is, a nice defensive play by Johnny Giovatello. Then Mitch Marlin can't hit a baseball hard to his last two at bats, but nothing to show for it. But again, Fernando to have that well with all to be able to make that play at the line drive, that's off your pitching arm. I hope his arm's in one piece, seriously. I mean, that, that was a rocket. How about Mitch Moreland, huh? Trying to come out of a slump and you hit two balls. You cannot hit two balls harder than that. So Salas does a great job. Rangers 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position tonight. And then keep in mind, they come in the best in the league, that department. So we go to the ninth, still 2 0 Angels. CJ Crone leads it off, and we get a look at Matt Bush, who is in for Texas. And if you haven't heard or you haven't seen any games for the Rangers, or haven't read the paper, whatever it is, Matt Bush is some story. Four games so far. Came in and got a hold on Saturday. Averages about 97 on his heater. And a former number one pick by the Padres in 2004, but as a shortstop, yeah. this, this story goes, it, it's pretty wild. I mean, the guy spent three years in jail. 
After a third DUI, he got out, was working at a Golden Corral, started playing catch, and then boom, next thing you know, he's pitching. Rangers take a flyer on him, and, and you know, this organization clearly has a nurturing yeah. feel to it because they've done it before, and he's got people here to help him, and, and frankly, he wouldn't be here if the results weren't yeah, there. Yeah, Kevin, you're exactly right on that. Impressive, and he has a, he has a manager right there. He's going to be one of those guys that's going to give you a hug, and it's going to be around you to see, to make sure that you put yourself, first and foremost, in possession in position to succeed. But when you look at 97 mile an hour average fastball, but his slider is 90 to 91. That's like J.R. Richards type That's slider. Crazy. That is nasty. Yeah, I mean, Jeff Bannister put him in there in the seventh inning of a 2 1 game on Saturday against Houston. Heart of the order. Got two quick strikeouts, then allowed a hit and a walk, and then still got out of the inning. But first real big leverage spot, and he did the job. A little tapper. And I asked Bannister today, I said, hey, is that the way you want this thing to look? And he said, well, um, not exactly the way that I had drew it up out of spring training, but uh, I certainly liked the way it looked. And the other reason he said with Dyson closing, he wanted Dyson to be able to just pitch one inning. In the past, he had sometimes crossed over, worked an inning a third. He, he thought he's best one inning, where Diekman and, and maybe Bush can go a little farther. There's Dyson, the closer. Yeah, when I look at Dyson, his stuff. Crone fouls he, it again. He's a power, power sinker. He's going to throw a fastball. He's 95 to 99 too, but it's down in the strike zone. So that being said, is a, is a power sinking fastball. The ball is put in play. So if you come in in the middle of an inning, a, a routine ground ball could end up finding a hole and getting a base hit and scoring a run. If you come in there with a clean inning yourself, it's going to take two or three singles to score. Crone goes around. Yes, he does. So Bush has a strikeout, and there's one down in the ninth. That's that J.R. Richard slider there. <laughs> that is uh, that's unbelievable how hard and firm this pitch is as a hitter. You got to make a commitment to try to make contact, especially when you're dealing with 97. So one down as Bush tries to keep this a two-run game. Johnny Giavitella, 12-game hit streak. Swinging at the first pitch, sound like he broke his bat. This one fading in center field, and Andrews can't get out there. Giovatella still running, and he's all the way to second. Good hard hustle from John Giovatella. Never stopped on that, and he's got a one-out double. And that's the thing. Even though you think you had a bad at bat, you, you break your bat, and you pop it up, it's always running through hard through the first base and looking up and trying to think in terms of getting in scoring position. We talked about his energy. Well, he made a great defensive play in the bottom of the eighth, this again off the end of the bat and Johnny Giovatella knowing that he has a chance to get in a scoring position You're not going to get many chances against Matt Bush. You have to take a shot and he did so. It's the seventh double of the season. Carlos Perez the catcher. 0 for 3 tonight. There's a strike. One thing to keep an eye on the outfield arms for the Rangers all extremely strong mm -hmm. Odor keeping Giovatella close. He doesn't allow him to get that big secondary lead. So if there's a hit into the outfield there will be a play at the plate. Rua and called off in center by Desmond. So there's two down and Giovatella retreats to second base. Joe Smith warming up, trying to close it out. I'm sure, he's dying to get back out there in another save situation after things went awry on Saturday. Gregorio Petit, the shortstop, essentially the third shortstop of the year for the Angels. You know, I mean, Angels and Simmons gets hurt. Then a couple days later, Pennington gets hurt, and they go and get Petit. He had some real good numbers to play well in spring training for the Angels. That was that was their goal. And it, the conversation, it's, it's been everywhere about the farm system for the Angels. So they went out and signed a lot of guys at the AAA level just in case of these type of situations where you could bring up a guy that's had some major league experience and fill in well. 0-1 to Petit as Bush is fouled off. Get out of the way quick in that Rangers dugout. It's a little tardy on that fastball. 
<laughs> Wise decision, going to move out of there completely. <laughs> That's Alberto came in a pinch run. 0 and 2. Just got a piece. 96 on that fastball. He doesn't really mess around with his motion, does he? It's, no, it's, it's boom. Here it comes. Rares back, but that swing like that's got to tell Bobby Wilson and Bush that he's he's on my high fastball. I got to go down and away. Try that slider now. If you're Bush, now if you're Petit, you're just trying to flare that little slider. In the right field for a hit. Giovatella off second. Two down in the ninth. This one wrapped left side. Good play. Andrews makes the catch, stayed with it. Inning over. And so we go to the bottom of the ninth. Rangers need two to tie with Andrews, Mazzara, and Rua. Two up. Arlington, two nothing Angels on an Albert Pujols two run home run, and the Rangers faithful looking for a little something here. They're going to have to get a rally against Joe Smith, who's been the closer with the injury to Houston Street, and he's coming off a game he'd like to forget. Yeah, he got two quick outs in that ninth inning against Baltimore, then a base hit by Chris Davis, and then eventually a three run home run the other way by Matt Weeders. But Smith has been. For the most part, excellent in his Angels career, third year with them, 10th year overall. Defensive changes for the Angels, too. Brendan Ryan, slick with the glove, comes in at short. Gregorio Petit, who was there, goes over to second, so Giovatella out of the game. The best defensive infield for Mike Sosha's crew. It'll be Elvis Andrews leading it off for the Rangers. Strike one from Smith. Here the Rangers, he's the perfect guy to have leading off this ninth because he can hit the ball to the entire field. He can try to pull it, but he also goes the other way, especially against Joe Smith's slider away. Mm -hmm. Inside with a fastball. One and one, Andrews, one for three tonight. Two and one. Joe Smith trying to hold on for Nick Tropiano, who was outstanding for the second straight start. Tropiano went six and two thirds, four hits, no runs, struck out six. Slider strike. 
And it's two and two to Andrews. Derek Holland was very good for the Rangers. Just that two run home run to Pujols. That's been it here tonight. Full count to Elvis Andrews. Now Holland was equally good. Six and two thirds for him ties his season high. Seven hits, the two runs, four Ks, and a walk. They're on the losing end right now. Ball four. And that allows Nomar Mazar to come up as the tying run, a lefty against Smith, the side armor. Pretty solid at bat by Andrews to not chase anything out of the strike zone there. Not necessarily known as a guy that's extremely patient and read that baseball very well out of the hand of Joe Smith and took a couple of those pitches out of the zone. That's just his 11th walk of the season. Joey Gallo has come out on deck to be a pinch hitter, too. Keep in mind, Joe Smith has an excellent, excellent pickoff move. Mm -hmm. Gallo just called up before the game. Now it's Mazzara. Just missed. Mazzara tonight, one for three, couple strikeouts. And a single. He's had a great rookie year. Made his debut against the Angels April 10th. Angels have Jose Alvarez warming in the pen. The lefty just in case. There's a strike. One and one to Mazzara. Two and one. Put yourself in a bad position against this Ranger club when you put yourself in fastball counts. And so he's looking on. A walk to Andrews, and now it's three and one to Mazzara. The tying run for the Rangers. Mazzara to center. Trout lines it up, and there's one away. Looks like you got that towards the end of the bat. Yeah. It's one of those swings, too, as a center fielder. It freezes you because you think it's going to be hit harder. The sinker's running down and away. You see it's off the end of the bat. He's got the foot down, just pulled off it just enough to keep that in the ballpark. You see it right off the end of the bat. A long swing like that freezes the center fielder, but Trout, with his speed, runs it down. You see that frustration from Mazzara because he had a pitch normally that he hits a long way. He did. So one down, and now Joey Gallo making his 2016 big league debut. Call up today, Shinsu Chu, Stubbs placed on the DL, and here is Gallo. Swinging at the first pitch to right, long run. Ortega got there. Now the throw to first. Not in time. Where Ortega was playing way back and a long way to go, and nearly threw Andrews out at first well, to end the game. You can see a pretty good indication of that throwing arm he has, and it's an accurate throwing arm. And Andrews is reading this baseball off the bat, thinking had a shot to fall in front of Ortega, how far he's got to come in. And no doubles defensive alignment and a strong throw. And Andrews just able to get his hand back in. So the Rangers down to their final out. It will be Bobby Wilson, who got to hit his last at bat. One for three tonight. Joe Smith trying to lock it down. Five of six on saves this year. Strike one. And Albert playing behind Andrews now. At that point, that run doesn't matter if you're the Angels at this point. Even if he's trying to steal, it doesn't matter. You're trying to get that last out. There goes the runner as Wilson fouls it away. 
And the Rangers down to their final strike. Joe Smith trying to lock it down for the Angels. Deals. And he got him. And the ball game is over. Joe Smith the save. Nick Tropiano was brilliant for the win. Albert Pujols with the offense with a two run shot. And the Angels take game one of this series two to nothing. And not often do you see a game like this a two nothing game in this ballpark with these two teams the way they swing the bat. This is perfect pitch game by both sides really in a big Defensive play there by Giovatella and that line drive back up the middle. Fernando Salas off the pitching arm recovers and flips it over to Albert who had a two run home run. For Mitch Smith on the stats, Mark Gubas, I'm Kevin Burkhart saying so long for Globe Life Park. The Angels beat the Rangers two to nothing. We now go to our Los Angeles studios.